Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a walk through the haunted halls of Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion as we examine all 13 specimens from the base game and explore their creepy backstories, pop culture influences, and even reveal each and every horrifying game over screen. If you would like a detailed exploration of the story of Spooky herself, be sure to check out this video, which I will link at the end of this one. With that said, let's start at the beginning of the game with the tamest of all monster specimens, Specimen 1. Coming in a variety of guises, this cardboard cutout known as Specimen 1 has no game over screen because it is impossible to die from encountering it. Well, unless it ends up blocking your path as you run from one of the more dangerous monsters inhabiting the mansion that is. The CatDOS database entry tells us there have been 4 fatalities from test subjects who encountered this specimen, all from heart attack. It proved ineffective against healthy subjects. As mentioned before, Specimen 1 comes in many different forms. While most of these consist of cute ghosts, spiders, pumpkins and the like, as we journey deeper into the mansion, Specimen 1 takes on a creepier appearance. Some of these designs are sly references to other fictional horror characters. For example, the evil variant of this slime creature is based on the look of SCP Entry 106. This pumpkin is labelled as Sam in the game files, a reference to the movie Trick or Treat. In the game's endless mode, we even see a cutout of the xenomorph from the movie Alien. Inspired by the lub glubs from popular animated show Adventure Time, Specimen 2 raises up from pools of slime on the floor, floating a few feet above the ground as it chases down the player. If caught, we are met with the following game over screen. The text reads, I know what you have done, and what you have yet to do, but it's alright because I'm inside you now. We are one, but I am many. It is said Specimen 2 has been responsible for 137 deaths inside this facility, and uses its claws and teeth to tear apart anyone close by. A note picked up just before first encountering this entity reads as follows. Spouting, splashing, soaking, innards, ingest, invoking, nailing, never stops for choking. After reading these strange lines, a choking is heard nearby, and Specimen 2 rises from a puddle of slime. This suggests this note may have been written by this monster when they were still human, and undergoing a hideous and painful transformation. Their body is, after all, human-like, but has decayed and morphed in grotesque fashion. Anybody with a fear of creepy crawlies will no doubt recoil at the sight of Specimen 3, which resembles a spider crossed with a giant centipede. It emerges from holes in the ceiling above the player and alerts us to its presence with an eerie clicking sound. It is stated in the game that Specimen 3 escaped its enclosure and went on a rampage around the facility. It kills with an infectious bite and was responsible for 43 fatalities according to CatDOS. Influenced by Japanese horror films such as The Ring and The Grudge, Specimen 4 is a ghost girl who resembles the ghostly children found in spooky JRPG Corpse Party. Her original form made way for the following two variations found in the game's endless mode. In the third of these new forms, she sprouts multiple arms and glitches out as she chases the player down. Her method of attack is consumption, and she has eaten 85 test subjects in the past. Her game over screen displays this method and is quite horrifying. After eating the player, Specimen 4's belly becomes swollen, full of human flesh, as she exclaims, Hush now, my child. You're safe. Specimen 4 only appears after clearing room 166, which seems to be a nod to SCP-166, who was also a little girl. 
We first encounter this chilling enemy in room 210. It was apparently discovered by scientists in an abandoned church before being transported to the GL lab facility within this mansion. Specimen 5's face is featureless and it nakedly wanders the halls wielding a giant blade. How it wields this blade is something to ponder as Specimen 5 has no hands. As we run from this specimen, it causes grim hallucinations which cover the walls and floor, disorientating the player and making escape more challenging. The game over screen features the following text. Tiny shiny holes in the sky, delicate perfect emptiness, black growing absences of life, cold swarming death, and we shall become them. The reason why Specimen 5 speaks this way is because they seem to be the leader of a strange religious cult, a cult which seems to worship demonic entities. We see evidence of human disciples who seem to have conducted rituals and sacrificed to a dark entity, possibly Specimen 5 itself. Of course the most obvious inspiration for this monster comes from the Silent Hill games. Its sound design resembles the ambient noise produced by nearby monsters in Silent Hill, a clanky echoing sound. It also looks reminiscent of the nurses and mannequins from Silent Hill 2, and of course that giant blade resembles the iconic weapon carried around by Pyramid Head. Finally, this pentagram design is similar to the one used by a cult known as the Order in Silent Hill, and well just look at the hellish industrial environment, the inspiration is clear. Just as Specimen 5 was inspired by Silent Hill, 6 has taken inspiration from The Legend of Zelda, in particular the Zelda games from the Nintendo 64 era. Specimen 6 himself looks very similar to the Happy Mask Salesman from the Zelda 64 games, and one big homage to creepypasta Ben Drowned. A story about a game cartridge haunted by the ghost of a boy named Ben, who, you guessed it, drowned. If we look at the backstory for this character, a puppet maker whose marionettes were thrown into the river by a group of jealous townsfolk, desperately trying to save his possessions, the puppet maker drowned. So we can see a direct parallel between the creepypasta Ben drowned and the story of Specimen 6. This creepy puppet master can only move when we take our eyes off him, so maintaining vision at all times is essential. He can drop from the ceiling at any time, hanging by strings with a contorted grin. This particular enemy also has the most wince inducing game over screen. Check it out if you dare. Comprised of a wall of screaming flesh, Specimen 7 chases the player through hellish hallways full of tortured souls. This enemy seems to represent a physical embodiment of trauma, pain and suffering, and also seems to be the troubled other half of the enlightened and tranquil cat encountered just before it. Balance is key. The CatDOS database comments how this wall of suffering is only effective against subjects with past trauma or psychological issues. Nonetheless, it has claimed 93 victims. Deer are usually gentle and graceful forest creatures, but of course not the ones found in Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, who have a taste for human flesh. Their master is a caped humanoid elk who spreads his cloak wide to reveal the screaming and tormented souls of fallen explorers trapped within. His design is heavily inspired by The Beast, a character from cult cartoon show Over the Garden Wall, itself inspired by icons from European folklore such as Hearn the Hunter and the Wendigo. As we run from Specimen 8, it taunts us with creepy dialogue such as this. Your submission is inevitable.
and upon being captured we are transported to its realm, where we must eventually join the other poor souls trapped inside its garments. The text displayed after receiving a game over to this specimen is often believed to be a reference to the movie Bambi. Specimen 9 comprises two different forms. The first is this weird floating head, made up from red clay, which randomly appears during points of the game and rushes the player with a jump scare. Dying to the specimen displays a screen with a wall of text, the phrase, take the dead, ominously repeating from top to bottom. It grew in size as it claimed more subjects, and after consuming many of the scientists working for GL Labs, was killed and dismantled according to its data entry. Its actual method for killing is unknown. The more people it takes, the stronger Specimen 9 becomes, eventually transforming into a fully human form at the end of the game and attacking with a variety of ghoulish abilities. In terms of inspiration, it is believed Specimen 9 may be a homage to Red from the NES Godzilla Creepypasta story, as both have red skeletal designs, cause instant game overs, and act as the final boss encounter in their respective fiction. Anyone who is familiar with 80s horror movie classic The Thing will likely notice its influence here on Specimen 10. The Thing is a movie about a parasite which latches onto a human host and infects their body, gradually morphing them into a monstrous being out to devour anything it encounters. And that's pretty much the story behind Specimen 10. Its escape caused the entirety of GL Labs to evacuate, as we discover by reading various research notes left about the place. However, one particular researcher was not so lucky and became infected by this parasite. He has now transformed into the terrifying creature which pursues us through the dark hallways of this abandoned lab. If we get too close to the monster, it opens its enormous mouth to bite us. Being bitten seems to infect us for a short while but stray too far away from Specimen 10 and it detaches the parasite from its human host and rushes us with a powerful attack. If we fall prey to this parasite, the following text is displayed on screen, which flashes with binary code. After translation, the code reads as follows. You are more than just an animal. Use the soul you've been given and be responsible for your actions. Looking like a demonic bull who just walks straight out of an abattoir, Specimen 11 is certainly one creepy enemy to encounter. We discover this monster in a fast food restaurant where everything is not as it seems. By referring to its cat DOS entry, we discover scientists first discovered Specimen 11 beneath a corporate restaurant franchise, and so the area we explore may be a simulation of such an environment a place to safely house such a demon. Subjects taken by Specimen 11 seem to vanish, with their remains showing up days later. This is because Specimen 11 can transport its prey to an alternate dimension, as we discover for ourselves if taken down by it. We find ourselves in a red maze, and upon discovering the specimen's location, Binary shows up on screen once again, this time translating to, believe in God, but question the teachings of men. Almost suggesting that this demon is a god, but not the kind we are expected to believe in if we listen to religious text such as the Bible. Inspired by popular Stephen King novel The Shining, Specimen 12 is a large Victorian-era mansion with the power to possess a host living within its walls and get them to carry out its cruel bidding. In this case, the host is an old man with a scythe. Not only was this location based on written horror fiction, it was also inspired by another video game, the classic PS1 game Clock Tower, in which the central protagonist is followed by a similar enemy type as they try to locate keys to access new areas of the tower. In the basement of this manor, we make a disturbing discovery, a bone graveyard giving us some idea of just how many subjects fell prey to this mansion and the elderly man it holds power over. We are told 57 to be precise. 
Finally, we have Specimen 13, the lost soul of a young woman who died in a deluge or hurricane. They have now become a powerful water demon, and take on the qualities of a siren. They appear harmless and at peace. However, their true face is downright terrifying, and their intentions wicked. It is said Specimen 13 has drowned 194 victims, so we must do our best not to become 195. We do this by staying above the water using Floating Debris, a gameplay sequence inspired by classic modern horror game Amnesia The Dark Descent. And with that, we have reached the end of this in-depth look at all 13 specimens from Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. Of course, there are more to discover when playing the game's Endless Mode and Karamari Hospital DLC, but most of those are simply enemies lifted from other games and included as easter eggs. However, if you would like to see a video on them in the future, let me know in the comments section below. And also, if you did enjoy this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more horror-related content. But for now, goodbye, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.